while you're back. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> the believer's voice of victory. And I've said many times where that came from. Many, many years ago, the word of the Lord came to me and he said, every believer has a voice. Well, you can see that from Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. And then Jesus said, I say unto you, arise. <clears throat> and David said to Goliath, I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts. So, let's go over here. We're right there in the book of Genesis. So, now in the 11th chapter, <clears throat> the whole earth was of one language or one word and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, are you listening now? They said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Up until that time, the building material was stone. It was stone. They came up with uniformity where it all looks just like. Now, this doesn't mean it's a bad thing that your house is a brick house. That's not, a, but I want, I want you to see this is in the beginning of things here. <clears throat> Let us build us a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had builded. Why did he have to come down? He wasn't living inside anyone. No. Mm -hmm. But now wait, let's, let's, let's go ahead here. And the Lord said, behold, or look at these people are one. They have one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. They were not directed by God. They imagined it. They came up with it on their own. Go to, let us go down and confound their language so they may not understand one another's speech. And the Lord scattered them abroad from there upon the face of the whole earth. They left off to build the city. Therefore, the name was called Babel or confusion. The Babylonian system was born into the earth right then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right then, the base of socialism was born. That's right. Everybody be the same. And pay no attention to God. I'd better make a difference. What do you think? We're not even going to inquire. Man. We're not going to do that. So the Lord scattered them from abroad there. <clears throat> they didn't immediately, one began to speak some of the language. No, 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 no. He confused the language. Yes. Well, no, 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 no. Well, now, now, wait a minute. Now, what'd you, what'd you say? Mm -hmm. Now, now. Uh, you're confusing me with that. Well, I didn't much like you anyway. So why don't you just get out of here? Because it, if it had been a different language, it wouldn't take but about a year to, but they confounded the language. And he began to scatter them. He did it. He scattered them. And then languages developed in different parts of the earth, not the known world, the earth. <laughs> there were Native American languages and it came out of ways to communicate with one another. They lost the knowledge 
<clears throat> of the fact, not knowing God, that words are primarily for the release of power. That's right. And not just communication. Yeah. They used, the leaders of that city used Nimrod, used the flood as we've got to protect ourselves from God. We need to build a tower. Mm -hmm. So if it floods again, they came from where Noah was with Ararat, went east. This is down toward where the Garden of Eden actually once was. So they weren't far from the Garden of Eden. Matter of fact, some of the rabbis say they weren't trying to build a, a tower to heaven. They were trying to build like a bridge back into Eden, mm -hmm. which we had been mm -hmm. kicked out of. We're going to have a utopian society apart from yes. God. Yes. That's socialism. Yes. And we get up, we're going to do everything like. And it's going to be like, and we're all going to be equal, yes. we'll have equity. Oh, yes. And so then you have Nimrod. <clears throat> what did he do? He started the first war. Mm -hmm. And just, just now Jesus said there'll always be wars and rumors of war. But this is multiplied centuries later. Mm -hmm. And where Jesus was, was modern time compared to that. Right. But he was there and saw it all. Because in the beginning, God, Elohim, plural, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Genesis 1. So, to confuse all of that and then the different languages began to grow up out They of say that. that 70 nations came out of that and, or 70 different languages or nations came out. They were all in one accord, if you will, mm -hmm. to use an Acts chapter <laughs> two term. They all were in unity. Whenever people get in unity, God shows up. And he showed up, but this time it was for negative. I mean, he had to stop them from, from being united. Words are important, and we can't, it's the trick of the enemy today. He uses words to confuse a situation. That's Babel. That's Babel. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it's it is. Confusion. Notice, notice every time a demon spoke to Jesus, mm -hmm. they never said, he. They, they would always say, have you come for us? Mm -hmm. They never used personal pronouns of he or she. Or, mm -hmm. So let me just tell you who uses those kind of <laughs> pronouns. You figure it out. So, in the first chapter of the book of Acts, the former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of that which Jesus began both to do and to teach. Now, this is Luke that's writing this, and from Luke's gospel, and this carries on. <clears throat> Verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put into his own power, but you shall receive power, dunamis, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of sight. <clears throat> Verse 11, where it said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. They went into, to an upper room, there abode Peter and James and John, Philip, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James, and all continued with one accord. Oh, <laughs> here we are. All continued, that, anything they could imagine, they could get it done, because they were in one accord. They were in one accord, in prayer, supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs be fulfilled that which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, 
which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he hath numbered with us and obtained part of this ministry. One translation says his portion of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of the iniquity falling headlong. He burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem and so forth and so forth. For it is written in the book of Psalm, let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein, and his bishop let another take. Therefore these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, one be ordained, be a witness. Now, people say, well, it should have been the apostle Paul. No, he wasn't there. Right. <laughs> and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly <clears throat> there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and, and it, or he sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We got bad what we lost at Babel. That's right. Now we can pray when we don't know how to pray as we ought. That's in the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. <laughs> he takes hold together with us against our infirmities when we know not what to pray for as we ought or we know not how to pray for it. For he ever maketh intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now when... My Aunt Pinky was talking about Grandma Owens. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> she, uh, she said, Kenneth, she said uh, she'd get all the, all the women out to, out to, all the men out all gone out to the field. And she said, I was too young. I didn't go to school yet said she'd close the shutters and close the door. And she said, all the moaning and the <laughs> groaning like you ain't never heard in your life. And she talking around and I couldn't understand a thing she said. You think she is praying? <laughs> she just told me grandma's baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And they were pushed out by the trail of tears. One of the kin folks of uh, uh, Willie George mm -hmm. wrote letters and said, they're, they're Cherokee Indians. What are we going to do in that heathen land? We know God. <clears throat> but Amen. here... Now, let me go back here where I was. Got the preaching lost my place. Acts <laughs> 2. And, and how here we, <clears throat> they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them, the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men in every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad and multitude came together, they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And in how, we, how, we, how hear we every man in our own language wherein we were born? And it lists them all from all over, all over what they knew as the world. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what does this mean? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, you men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it's but the, the third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning. 
but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now what did that do? You go back now, what the apostle Paul, he knew all this. He just simply said, he was talking to the Corinthian church. Specific, they were out of order. A specific church. That had to a, a specific church. That's right. Let your women be silent in the church. Chapter one of the book of Acts, I've got Mary the mother of Jesus in there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Right. She's not Catholic. <laughs> She's Pentecostal. That's right. I mean, I didn't mean to be rude there. I'm not trying to be rude. <laughs> but I mean, you got the women and don't and think that's fall. Don't think that's falling on deaf ears among the Catholic community, because you go back, it, check it out. It goes back a long ways. Yes. Well, they began to read that. They began to read it. Well, what is this? If it's for her, it's for us. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Prophesied by Joel, your daughters shall prophesy. Yes. Well, what is prophecy? What is prophesying? Is preaching prophesying? Be, or speaking in the church, you would prophesy yes. in the church. And so she, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't have to go outside to do it. It'd be in the church. Mm -hmm. So that means you can, that's like what Brother Hagin said, you made your own minors. Yeah. And get in church splits over it. Yes. Anyway, but I'm not the judge of that. But this book is. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul will even, to Paul's defense, Paul will even talk about women who are pastoring home churches yeah in his writings, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that argument's done, that's yeah. Paul. Just take it out of context that's and right. build a doctrine around it and then charge big, with a lot of fusses and so forth. Well, you just stay right in this. On my servants and upon my handmaidens I will pour out in those days, I'll show wonders in the heavens above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Praise the God. sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Therefore, a great and notable day of the Lord coming, and come, it will come to pass. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus mm. of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God, God did by him in the midst of you, and you yourselves also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. You have taken by wicked hands and <laughs> crucified and slain whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not put, now, it, you'll find that in, in, the, um, in, in the authorized version, in the book of Isaiah, yes. having been loosed of the pains of death. <laughs> That's not just flesh. That curse is done because it was impossible that he should be holding of it. David, speaking concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Mm. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, all my flesh shall rest, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer the Holy One to, to see corruption. corruption. Thou hast made known me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy and, and continuous men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us this unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath unto him, what? God had sworn with an oath unto him. We're talking about blood covenants Damn here. Oh my God. Hallelujah. That's blood talk. Yes, sir. He swore it. that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this before he spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. 
Now Peter and John went together in the temple, uh, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them which entered into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked an alms. Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting (laughs) to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he stood up, (laughs) walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now, I'm going to go from here to something Gloria said. Really profound. She said Jesus trained his men. Yes, he did. He trained them. In doing so, he set them against sickness and disease. And he said, go into all the world and preach this. In my name, in my name, these signs will follow. Well, I heard from Rick Renner, glory to God, is signs. That's his signature. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Cast out devils in my name all over the world. So he hasn't changed. No. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That beautiful sermon right there happened right there near the temple. And who's preaching it? Peter. Just 50 days prior to that, he denied him. Not very far from there. But look at the difference that the Holy Spirit made in him. Bold. Made him bold. Well, it's because... You you shall receive boldness. It's because of what Jesus prayed for him. Yeah. He turned and looked at him. He said, Peter, I pray that your faith fail not. And it didn't. So, and he began to use the scripture to preach all of this. He just kept referring to David. And he, and uh, so I picked up on that. I mean, way back there. And I began to, my message was what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost and what happened from the cross to the throne. Yeah, that's good. And you go to the book of Hebrews and you find out what happened in the throne. Mm -hmm. And right here you find out in more places than one that Jesus went to hell first. Mm -hmm. It's all in the 22nd Psalm, particularly if you read it in the classic man. David wrote. David wrote that. And he's quoting David. There's people being, I believe it right now as you were reading that. I, I did everything I could to sit in this chair. As you're as you're reading that, <laughs> I want that power. You can you can have that power. Yes, you can receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Begin to speak in other tongues. People got healed as you were reading that, just like this man. Got up. That's and you the know, power. Now, of now he said, "Now you tarry there till he comes." Well, he came. You don't yes, have to tarry. No, no more. Stop that tarrying and start receiving. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> All right, amen. <laughs> God, I have so much to do and so much going on. Without you, I don't know how to get it all done. And I know what your word says, but I just feel so overwhelmed with so many things. Lord, what do I do to overcome these obstacles? I need an answer. Holy Spirit, show me. This is your covenant guaranteeing peace, healing, provision, spirit, soul, body, financial, in every area of life. Stop accepting a single contradiction to a blood-ratified covenant. I am loved by God. I am anointed. I am called. I do have the might of Christ. I am made in His image. I am healed. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 
Order God, the Covenant, and the Contradiction book by Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens for only $26.99 on kcm.org slash TV Covenant or when you call 800-600-7395. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Father, we thank you this morning and we give you praise. And we thank you that this building once more for one whole week will be a sanctuary for people from all over the world. And we thank you today that this building is full of the Holy Ghost and power from on high. And we praise you and we honor you today. And we pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. KCBC is where I built a solid faith foundation before I started my career. With our busy schedules, finding a college with a close community and shared values was so important to us. And we found it here. At KCBC, I renewed my identity in Christ. I got a second chance and found my purpose. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a community of family and faith here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Through practical and classroom education, get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry with faith, integrity, and excellence. Get hands-on ministry and outreach opportunities, discover new gifts and talents, and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. So glad you could be with us today. You just wail tomorrow. <laughs> God. You need to be here between the, the broadcast. Yes, yes. Amen. And until then, and you know what I'm about to say, because the Lord instructed me to say this every time, to remind you every time, that God loves you. God loves you. There's nowhere it's that the Bible says God is power, but it does say God is love. He is love. God loves you and we love you with the love of God. And that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Glory to God. Praise God forevermore. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls KCM.org your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith based content and teaching resources available to you free. You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org slash notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org slash notes.